the YouTube world, my name is Nicholas Montez, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Nicholas Montez. Welcome back to another YouTube channel, everybody. I'm so excited to have you all back here together again, and in today's video, we are going to be discussing episode 6, the finale of Loki. Now, uh, you really, really, we're going to do, because this is the series finale, we got some stuff to do that is different from my normal Loki reviews. First, I'm going to talk about my my thoughts on the show going into it. Like, what were my thoughts going into it, like, and how it kind of changed. Then I'm going to talk, and then of course I'm going to do my review for the episode, do the good, the bad, give my score. Then talk about, because this show is going to have a season two, I'm going to talk about how I think that's going to affect it. And then I'm going to talk about how I think the events that happen in this episode is going to affect the rest of the MCU, because technically... This is a big thing since it's starting the multiverse. And then I'm going to talk about the next MCU Disney Plus um, TV show. So with that said, let's start talking about what were my thoughts going into it before all six episodes were released. So if you've seen my first review of the episode, and you saw my review for the finale of Falcon and the Soldier. And I've said it a couple times on this channel. I was a bit nervous going into Loki a little bit. Because first off, even before I saw that... I believe that the announcement of the Loki show was like... Announced like back before Avengers Infinity War came out. And even before that, I still did not know what to think of this show. Because... Now obviously, having other versions of Loki, like Kid Loki and all that stuff, that was interesting to me, but why did he have, why does Loki have to be the show that has to do with the multiverse, and has to do with all of these different things, why does it have to be that, and like, I just didn't think of what we could do with this sort of series, uh, but then they started releasing some trailers, but also, it also goes back to the Avengers Infinity War as Loki died in that film, and it kind of ended his arc right there, like, it ended out his arc right there, but then when he still, but then when you see the scene in Avengers Endgame, and literally just undercuts the character, I mean, obviously gives the answer of how Loki to TV shows made, but it just does not, like, put it together, uh, but, it, but still, the whole show just kind of, like, makes his death, like, not meaning for me i'm sure anymore so but when we started getting some trailers i started to get a little bit invested into it and just started to wonder what was this what is this show gonna be more about and uh yeah so i was a little bit more excited but overall i was a bit surprised of what we got kind of disappointed but we'll get that in just a minute but now let's talk about the episode finale <laughs> And to be honest with you, I did like this episode, but as a finale to this show specifically, it uh, kind of was a bit disappointing. Now, on the good side, so you have like two journeys here. So, as this is a show that sets up, that basically, it's of these Disney Plus TV shows, we know that this is one of those shows that's going to have a season two. I don't, I don't remember if WandaVision said they're having season two. They're probably going to have a Falcon Warrior Soldier season two, or Captain America and the Winter Soldier season two. <coughs> but we know this is one of the shows that's going to have a season two, and that's because of the whole big multiverse setup. And uh, to me, when it ended, I just watched the review for it, and I, I, it kind of made sense of why it didn't feel like this big bang finale and i kind of understood it um but the i'll talk more about my problems with that and that but uh yeah there's things that are set up for the future that i did like that whole scene of figuring out who is behind all of this he who remains um it's jonathan majors and uh honestly if you guys do not know 
a couple months ago, we just got announced that Jonathan Majors is going to be playing King the Conqueror in Ant-Man the Lost. In this episode of Loki, he's technically not playing the King the Conqueror, but he's playing He Who Remains, which technically in the comics, he's like this very old guy, but Jonathan Majors is, a, is, a, is, play, is supposed to be playing King the Conqueror in Ant-Man the Lost Quantumania. Uh, so there's some exciting stuff there, as Ant-Man the Wasp is on the media, is actually going to be part of this whole multiverse thing. Um, so, what were my thoughts on the episode? I thought it kind of offered, like, when, can't, when He Who Remains is telling us that story that we saw in episode 1, where he's telling us about the, this, this whole multiversal war and stuff like that, he kind of did it in his own perspective as different versions of him found that all these universes were collapsed onto each other and it was kind of cool the way he told that story and he basically made a final choice he basically told Loki and Sylvie that uh kill me and you get to rule it no no wait you rule this and I go you kill me and a bunch of other versions of me are coming uh and it creates a little relationship between Sylvie and Loki in that, I guess, he who remains, like, manipulates Sylvie in order for all these Lokis to happen. Which, to me, is kind of something clever. I think that's what it is. And, like, he who remains is, like, putting all these these, this, these two characters, like, apart from each other. And it's very cool way to do that. Uh, and then you go back to the TVA. And you get that little talk with Mobius and uh, Ravana, and uh, once again, this just feels like the talk that B15 and Ravana had in Episode Five, where they're trying to they're trying to say to tell people the truth, and she's not listening. She doesn't want people to tell the truth. She obviously wants to find free will. She wants to figure this stuff out. But she doesn't want to know. like honestly i honestly thought that she's the one that knows about this all this this whole time and she she doesn't want to know she doesn't want anybody to know like i just i just don't understand her perspective on all this but i do understand that she wants to find free will so that was a cool that was a good spot but the whole setup of all this is really exciting which we'll talk about in a little bit but now let's move on to the bad, because there are some bad stuff in it. And I think the problem with this episode is that when it's kind of setting up season two, I'm not so sure that's a really good idea, because if you think about it, even though this is the setup of the multiverse and all that stuff, we have other stuff that's going to continue the multiverse. We have Spider-Man No Way Home. Well, no, actually, we have to actually come away from a month now because we're actually going to be getting What If, which is basically because of the multiverse happening, we're going to see all these different versions of what if the timeline was switched up and this scenario happened. And then you're going to be getting Spider-Man No Way Home, where we're basically going to be getting all these, all these different Spider-Man movie characters coming into the um, MCU timelines and stuff like that. And then we're going to be getting Doctor Strange 2, which is another multiverse movie, as it is in the title. And then we're going to be getting Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania since Jonathan Majors is playing the main villain of that film. So the problem with that is that because you have all these other projects that are going to be focusing on the multiverse, it's kind of weird because... You have all these other projects, and either, and we don't know how all these are gonna end, but one of them could, like, Ant-Man Lost Quantumania could end this multiversal war. It could end, it could put all of this back, but I'm thinking that Loki Epic Season 2 is probably going to fix this whole multiverse thing, uh, since it's probably gonna come after Ant-Man the Lost Quantumania. But that's really the only issue with this episode, but I, I just don't have any issues with this episode. I just feel like it could have been the big slang finale, like Falcon Soldier and WandaVision did, but 
We don't know if it's getting a season two yet, so we'll, we'll see. But that's my review for episode six of Loki. Uh, before I give you my final score, be sure to tell me down below what were your thoughts on Loki episode six. Did you guys love it? Did you guys hate it? Were you right there between? Let's get some nice discussions going. With that said, let's get on my scores. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,